Hey guys, it's Miss Nick Schnicks here, and today I have a little friend with me called Little Stuff. This is my dog, and she is fabulous. Look at this papa. She's a cool papa. Anyways, I am going to be playing Phantom of the West, and <clears throat> as the description said, it is a person who is a spirit who can. Are you good? It's a person who is a spirit that can possess people, and basically, they're your puppets, all this and that. It has four different endings. So, if I don't put all the endings in this video, let me know if you want another video on this. And uh, there's apparently like over 22,000 words. It's a novella and over 900 pages. <clears throat> so, I think that's really cool. So, this person put a lot of work into this. Some people like it, some people don't. Everyone has their own opinion. But I'm going to see if you guys enjoy this. If you want another video on it, if I don't complete it, just let me know. But let's get right into it. Playing Phantom of the West is simple. The story is presented as a series of pages with text accompanied with images. Selecting OK will continue to the next page. OK. Occasionally, you will be presented with multiple choices. Some choices will affect the story more than others. Please select OK to see an example of multiple choices. This is the first choice. Select the arrow key if you would like to see the second choice or select OK to continue. This is the second choice. Select the back arrow if you like to see the first choice. Oh, OK. <clears throat> Finally, the, selecting these little arrows up here will open the options menu. Chapter 1. I don't hear anything. Oh, do we have to save it? Oh! I guess we'll just save it whenever we're good. My name is Dr. Alexander Caden. If you can hear me or at least read what I'm saying, you've come at a good time. This evening I'm going to drink an elixir that allows me to possess other people. That is not what I read in the description. That's the city of New Ferrando out there. It's the main fort of the western continent. I have lived on this continent since I was young. The people here will be the first to see my making of history. This rainy evening, everything changes. <laughs> um... <clears throat> If I do make another video on this, let me let me know if you guys want me to read. But other than that, I'm gonna let him read because I don't wanna kill my voice. There is no point in wasting time. I drink the elixir. As I do, I smell the mixture of blood. It was a special kind of blood and an essential ingredient. It reminds me of how much work it took to make this. I finished the elixir, but there's some time left before it'll take effect. I don't know how, I mean, it doesn't seem interesting at all. It doesn't really, I'm, I'm going to stop judging it before. I leave my hotel room and walk out to the city below. There are plenty of people walking by the streets, but it's not that loud. I'm a bit excited, and I don't feel that a lot nowadays. Once this elixir takes effect, there are a lot of things I can do. It's been some time now, and I don't feel well. My mind is spacing out and I might be getting weaker. I turn into a nearby alley and fall to my knees. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is there a choice? No, there's not a choice. <laughs> a patrolling police officer notices me and stops in the alley. Are you all right, sir? He asks. I'm still lightheaded, but I manage to tilt my head up to look at the officer. I cannot feel my own face though. Is it missing? What the fuck? Just a moment later, I can open my eyes. This has to be it. I'm as light as vapor now. This is a good opportunity to test my new ability. Okay. Without hesitation, I leap towards the officer. My body is oh, now a shit. black, gaseous mass, 
and I can feel myself flying. My old pile of clothes is left behind as I absorb myself into the officer. <sighs> my hands, my skin, my clothes, they're all different. The elixir must have worked. I need to rest and think about what I'll do. I find the officer's car nearby and drive to his home. I didn't really need to think about where this officer lived. It just came naturally to me. I go up into the officer's apartment. The bedroom inside is alright. I like- Oh uh, no! <sighs> I was attending L University <coughs> at Claire in the mainland, and was in Professor Arvin's world history lecture at the time. 600 years ago, the natives of the western continent lived in peace, he said. Those natives worshipped four gods. Okay. Says Joe was the god of play. Behind his wooden mask was a joyful man with long, flowing hair. Bakur was the god of indulgence. He was the chief of the gods, and he basked himself in his own power. Okay. Vanal was the goddess of romance. Few could resist her beautiful, leafy, green hair. Finally, Bekshtai was the god of tradition and the past. While he was not the leader, Bekshtai was perhaps the smartest of the group. Don't be judging me that I'm drinking a chocolate shake from Jack in the Box. Do not tell me. I that relaxed for the rest of the lecture. That is all for today, the professor concluded. <gasps> I have my normal office hours, if anyone needs it. What is that? Else, it was looking like a freaking palm tree from Minecraft. I now see what this person means class, by the. I walked to Professor Arvin's office to see him. I I can see what the person meant by horrible graphics, but I mean it's just art made in on a computer. You could tell. Hello, Professor. I said. Hello, Caden. What do you need? Well, I've been studying for your class, but I've been having a lot on my mind. I've been thinking about other things. I'm not sure what the best thing to do is. Caden, I am just a professor. I am not a counselor. I am not sure about what you can do. However, whatever the problem is, I hope that you can take care of it so that you can do well here. Take care, Caden. The professor and I shook hands, and I left. That's <laughs> okay. I bet T they're not even gonna explain what was on their mind. They just said that they're gonna go talk to the professor. Their professor turned them down, saying that oh, I'm not a, I'm not a counselor, and then just, they're just gonna move on in life. I guess he's just worried that he's not gonna be able to do good in class. Well, maybe you shouldn't have your arms looking like this, be leaning back in his class, acting like you don't know what the hell you do and you ain't taking no notes, my dude. Get yourself a pen, get yourself a piece of paper, and write down some damn notes. I wake up, feeling refreshed. I had a feeling that waking up in a different body would be awkward, but I'm actually adjusting fairly well. Good morning, sleepyhead. What? Who are you? I ask the man lying next to me, on the bed. He's wearing a robe and a wooden tribal mask, the same mask that the natives of the West wore. I assume that he's Sesja one of the native gods. I don't see how any other person could have gotten into this room, especially dressed like that. My brother said that he sensed someone drinking his blood, so I just came by to see who it was. Now that that mystery's solved, I guess I can leave you alone, for now. Oh, and I'll see if I can get the rest of the family to meet you. Ta-ta. Says Ja says, and slides off the edge of the bed. I lean over the edge to see him, but he's gone. Well, it seems like I'm almost ready to start my body hopping adventure in earnest, but I have three more things to worry about. First, I have to sign out of my hotel room, since I don't want to pay for any more nights. I deliberately left the key in the room, so I'll fly through the crack in either the door or the window to get it. Uh... Uh... Uh, 
are the pain. It, it's so much pain. Ah. Save me, little stuff. Ah. Uh, I feel the pain. Oh, this is so bad. Second, the police department might be getting suspicious that I, as this police officer, haven't reported over the night. Okay. Third, I live at the Arcticon Research Facility, a large underground science complex located in the snowy mountains north on this continent. However, Arcticon's entrance is restricted to authorized personnel, and I won't be recognized as this officer, so I need another way to get in. Well, I have my work cut out for me. I use the phone in the officer's apartment to call a good co-worker of mine, Dr. Caitlin Riley. Hello Caitlin, I'm Dr. Caitlin, I say. Dr. Caitlin? You sound different, says Caitlin. Do you remember the chemical compound that we were all working on? Well, I finally drank a sample of it, and now I can possess other people. Oh, Katie, it really is you. So, you're in a different body then. Yeah, that's right, Caitlin. Anyway. I can't get back to Arcticon the way I am now. Can you pick me and drive us back? After giving Caitlin my street address, she agrees. Also, we need to stop off at the hotel that I was staying at. Is that okay, Caitlin? I ask. Uh, okay, Caitlin, she says. Nearly an hour later, Caitlin pulls in front of the apartment building. Caitlin, over here. I wave. Oh, hey, you really did switch bodies. And you're a cop? Well, all right, get in. Actually, I need to leave this body here. I don't want the police department to trace any place past this officer's home. That means I need to possess you, Caitlin. Me. Caitlin asks. Do you have to? I mean, it just seems invasive. That's all. She scratches her head. Well, if I'm not in a body, I can be in a gaseous form, but then we couldn't keep a low profile. I mean, people would just be thinking that they're seeing shit. <laughs> Caitlin looks at a towel in the back seat. Wait, she says. I can wrap you in my towel, and it'll look like you're a baby in a blanket. It'd be cute. Well, how about it? She asks. Sure, go ahead, man. I fly out of the officer and onto the towel. Thanks, Katie, Caitlin says. As she wraps me in, she drives to the hotel and goes up to my floor. Caitlin puts me down in front of my door. I fly through the bottom of the door, get the key, give the keys to Caitlin, and fly back into my blanket. Caitlin and I go down to the lobby. While Caitlin is checking out with the receptionist, the receptionist notices me. Oh, what a cute baby. Can I see? She asks. Caitlin tries to turn me towards the receptionist, but I resist. Can Caitlin not realize how showing my face could blow our cover? What's wrong, Katie? Why don't you want to look away from my chest? Did you want to drink? Caitlin asks, oh, her name's Katie? That's such a good name, says the receptionist. I roll my eyes. Well, we have to go, says Caitlin. Once we're back in the car, Caitlin comes to a realization. Wait, I can't breastfeed you anyway. You don't have a mouth. Also, I need to give birth to an actual baby to produce milk anyway. I'm a doctor, so I should have known that. Oops. Caitlin is right. I don't have a mouth in this form, although I might still be able to talk without it. I'm about to call her out for her absent-mindedness, but I decide against it, since she is a good friend. That was not even needed. <laughs> no one needs to know about basic forms of human beings called womanhood. Caitlin goes <coughs> north on the highway to Arcticon. That's all that was needed. We reach the Snowy Mountain Pass, one of the highest points on this continent, and one that gives a great view. We pass through Arcticon's security checkpoint without incident. Caitlin parks in the parking garage, and we take the adjoining tram, which goes to the underground research center. Afterwards, I fly out of the baby blanket. After that, I managed to have my clothes appear on me, just by thinking about it. 
What, did it come from the graves of where you left it or something? A hobo probably picked that stuff up. Now he's probably walking around naked or something, man. Come on. We need to meet Yuki, Caitlin says, dragging me by the hand. Hmm? Caitlin leads me to a lounge with Dr. Yukio Kiyoshi, another co-worker of ours. Hello, Caitlin and Kaden, he says, surprised. Yuki, you know how I said Kaden called me a couple of hours ago? Well, this is what he's like now. He can go inside other people and control them, like a ghost. Amazing, Yukio says. So, what do we do now? Asks Yukio. Uh. Caitlin hesitates, turning towards me. What do you want to do, Katie? Whatever it is, I'm sure Yuki and I would love to help you with it. I haven't decided yet, I tell Caitlin and Yukio. Okay Kaden, Caitlin, and I will be around here if you want to talk to us later, says Yukio. I nod and leave. I just noticed how stiff his body looks. I take the tram to the housing sector of the Arcticon research facility. Once I'm back at my apartment, I lie on my bed, relaxed. Hello. I am pleased to meet you, Dr. Caden, says a voice. I turn to a man standing near my bedroom door. He's wearing a leather waistcoat, a tribal skirt made of cloth, and leather boots. I am Bekshtai, god of tradition and the past. Surely, you already know about me. And his professor turned down. You drank from my blood and became a false spirit, which is an act of sacrilege. Normally, such acts are punished, but I will forgive you under one condition. My siblings and I want to learn more about you. Therefore, I want you to come to our home. We live in the ancient ruins of our city, and you can find it in the forest to the west. The forest to the west? Are you talking about the Western Continental Park? I ask. Correct, but there is a problem. The park is not open to the entire public at the moment, and flying over the park as a spirit might draw the ire of the park rangers. Stay here for today, as I will return here tomorrow to share a plan with you. Bekshtai finally leaves. It seems like I have the rest of the day to myself. I wonder what I should do. Guess we'll decide to sleep until tomorrow. So you guys, let me know if you want to see any more of Platinum, Plat, Phantom in the West. Sorry, I can't read. With me, and my Dagu. Nope, nope. And don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video, whatever I make. Bye bye.